All right, I'm only doing this once and for one thing only. I made a tutorial eight years ago covering how to make a FNAF screen distortion shader um, in Gimmick Studio 1.4. And apparently this tutorial got really popular, but uh, eight years later, I still got motherfuckers asking me how to get this run in Gimmick Studio 2, which is literally the same exact thing, but, you know... I don't know, maybe a new tutorial is overdue. I'm only doing this this once, and I'm never touching this engine again, okay? I work in Godot now. That is a superior engine. Take it, okay? So let's start by creating a room where we're going to do our test. Beautiful. We're going to set up an asset uh, and then drag and drop our bootleg backdrop. There we go. Beautiful. Next, we need to have an object that is going to be performing our screen distortions. So let's make a, sh not a shader. That's too early for that. We need an object. We need an object. We're going to call it controller. Beautiful. Let's go into the room. We're going to click on the instances layer and then just drop our controller here. Maybe even put it at the top so we can see it. That nice little dot. Beautiful. So we need to program this controller to uh, distort our screen. In order for us to do that, well, the first thing we need to do is tell the application to stop drawing itself automatically because we would like to do some shenanigans to the contents of the screen before it draws it. So we need to tell it, don't draw automatically, we'll do it for you. Okay, so to do that, we do application, surface draw enabled, false. There we go. That will stop it from automatically drawing. Now, to override what it's drawing, we're going to go to the draw post draw event. And uh, right now, if I were to run the game uh, with nothing in here, it's just going to be a blank screen. But if I do surface draw or draw surface, if I you know, still use this engine, surface, we're going to do application surface and then set it to zero and zero which is the top left corner of the screen coordinates and now if i do this bam we got our contents beautiful now we would like to apply some shenanigans to this uh this screen uh the surface and to do that we are going to create a shader shader okay we're going to call it sh underscore curve and then we're going to go up here we're going to apply the shader to the contents of the surface. So we do uh, set, is it set shader or shader set? And then tell it which shader to set. And then after we draw the surface, we're going to do shader reset. There we go. So this shader is going to be affecting only the stuff that we put in between uh, shader set and shader reset. Now, if we run this real quick, it should still be working. There we go. Uh, now, to test if the shader actually worked, let's go to the fragment shader, which is um, the part where you mess around with the pixels. And let's say we're going to multiply this whole thing by 0 0.5. This should half the brightness of the entire screen contents. There we go. Cool. So that works. What do we want to do now? Well, now we would like to distort the screen. And we specifically want to distort it at the edges. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, little little basic 101 on how shaders work a shader is an application that runs on your graphics card for each and every single pixel of the application so the resolution of this whole game is i don't know like 720 1280 by 720 maybe so that means that every single one of those pixels in that 1280 by 720 resolution is going to run this shader code another thing the the coordinates of each and every pixel are ranged between zero and one. So if you take a look in the top left corner, uh, there's one single pixel in that top left corner. Its coordinates are zero on the X axis and zero on the Y axis. On the top right corner, it will be one on the X axis, zero on the Y axis. Bottom right corner is going to be one, one, and then bottom left is going to be zero, one. That's how shaders work. They're, they don't work in pixel space. They work in texture coordinate space, which are what we refer to as UVs. Um, so we need to keep that in mind. We're working with value between zero and one. Now we have access to the texture coordinates using this little property called text chord. What we can do is we can mess around with this. Like for example, uh, we can add a vector two and let's say we add 0 0.5 and then zero. So we add 
0 0.5 to the x coordinate, 0 to the y coordinate. This should shift the entire picture, if we don't balls it up, of course, with, you know, must have a plus sign in there. Uh, this should shift the entire picture to the side by half. So you see half the screen is now just the last buffered known pixel uh, that the screen, the shader knew about. Cool. Well, what do we go from here? So we don't want to mess around with the X uh, axis. As a matter of fact, we just want to mess around with the Y axis. Okay, let's run the application. Let's figure out what what it is we want to do. So we, we, we know that in the middle of the screen, we don't want any distortions. We know that to the edges of the screen, we want all the distortion. And we know that it needs to be exponential. It needs to be progressively more um, severe. So what we can do is we can sample, we can use the coordinates of the pixels where they are right now. And through a little bit of addition and multiplication, we can uh, tell them to distort the further they are from the center of the screen, the more they distort. Now, the pixels that are higher up have to be distorted upwards. The pixels that are down have to be distorted downwards. And then same thing on the left. Um, pixels over here, these are the most distorted up. Pixels down here, the most distorted down. And the closer it gets to the middle of the screen, the less distortion we want to have. Okay, so fair enough. Let's start by some sort of vertical distortion. And that's the thing. The shader only distorts things vertically. There's no horizontal distortion. So we keep the horizontal distortion at zero, zero. We just add nothing. Okay, let's make a float offset Y. We're going to sample the coordinates of the pixels where they are right now. So we want just the Y axis of the pixel. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, this is where we have a bit of a conundrum because technically the further to the right and further to the left, that's where the distortion has to be bigger. So we actually need the X axis here. We're going to use the X information. The further the pixel away from the center, the more it's going to be distorted. Okay. Now, what does that look like if we just shove that right in there? Let's see. Okay. We do have distortion and then notice what's happening here. Anything on the left has no distortion. And as it goes progressively more and more and more to the right, we get more and more distortion up. Okay. Now here's the problem. We don't want unaffected pixels to be on the left side of the screen. We want them to be in the middle. We know that texture coordinates, um, the, the shader treats pixel coordinates, uh, with the left being zero and the right being one. Okay. How do we make it so that the center is zero? Well, we can, uh, we can subtract 0 0.5. What is that going to give us? Okay. Well, there you go. Now, the middle is unaffected and the right goes up, the left goes down. We don't want the left to go down. We want the left to go up as well. So what we need to do is we need to make the value be absolute using the ABS function. ABS is going to make it so that positive values stay positive. Negative values are flipped to be positive. And that is going to look like this. Bam. Look at that. Center is unaffected as it progressively goes further to the right and further to the left, the distortion increases. Now you can see that there's a bit of a problem. There's a, there's a very clear V right in the middle. And that's because it's very harsh and uh, it seems like it's just affecting the distortion at the same exact rate all throughout the center, uh, all throughout the entire image. We actually want the distortion to start non-existent in the middle, but then slowly ramp up as it goes further away from the center. So we can actually do that by just taking the offset amount and multiplying it by itself, which is done like this. Don't forget the equal sign. Okay. Now, yeah, look at that. Beautiful. So the center only starts gradually distorting um, because, well, th this value in the center is already going to be zero. And then by multiply, uh, multiplying it by itself, you make it exponentially uh, increase in value as uh, it drifts off the side. Cool. But the only problem is that it's all going up. It's all going up. We want it so that any pixels that are above the center go up. Any pixels that are below the center go down. Okay, well, guess what? We do have another coordinate um, axis that we can use, which is the Y axis. So we're going to do this. We're going to create another value, um, another variable offset X. And uh, we're going to sample the Y axis. And we're also going to shift it by half the screen. 
because remember top is zero bottom is one and we also need to f not forget the semicolon because you know syntax okay now that didn't do anything because guess what we actually have to make use of this value so we're going to go over here past the abs and multiply the effect hey look at that now right now it has a bit of a barrel effect it's actually doing the opposite of what we want so instead of us adding we're going to subtract there we go now it's kind of difficult to see so why don't we increase the amount we're going to make a float uh and then call it curve amount let's set it to 2.0 which might be kind of extreme but let's see we're going to multiply this amalgamation by 2.0 okay and that's uh it's pretty good again it's still it's difficult to see without any motion okay let's set it to three okay so now it's getting kind of extreme but let's go further what if you wanted to control this from within your game logic uh we're gonna do the following we're gonna make a uniform float we're going to get rid of the value because when you make it a uniform, you're basically telling the shader this value is controlled externally outside of the shader. So you can't be setting it to any values. Cool. We need to now make it so that we can control this variable, this shader variable. And we can do so by exposing it in our code. So we're going to do this. We're going to make a variable called curve. Uh, let's do curve amount and then set it to 1.0. And then we're also going to do curve uniform. And this is where we need to get, we need to acquire this uniform. So we do shader get uniform. The shader uh, from which we would like to get the uniform is sh curve, which is this shader right here. And then the uniform that we would like to get is this one curve amount, curve AMT. Beautiful. Now we have. Uh, a reference to that uniform so this is how we'll be able to talk to it to control it and this is a variable which will store your distortion uh, amount so that you can mess around with it and edit it okay now we're gonna take this uniform we're gonna go back to the post draw and then when we uh, work with the shader we're going to use a command in order to address it uh, in order to address the uniform so we do shader set uniform um f technically i think we could just yeah uniform f there we go the uniform is curve uniform that's the variable containing it a reference to it and that the value is going to be this variable that we created uh, curve amount just pass it on here beautiful okay now technically if i were to run this right now it runs, doesn't crash. That's a good sign. Uh, but what if we take curve amount and then add to it, let's say 0 0.00001 times delta time to slow it down even further. Okay, there you go. There's your distortion screen rising ever so slightly. Okay, let's, uh, maybe you want to like dial in the value. So let's do if keyboard check, we're going to do VK right and then what are we going to do here we're going to take that curve amount and then add to it 0 0.0001 times delta times delta okay beautiful if keyboard check vk left we're going to subtract this amount might even have to add like an extra zero here because it might be very very strong we also might want to not balls up the uh the spelling you know minus there we go all right and then you can see with the right key i can control and what happens when we go negative yeah, okay there you go you can see that it's uh shrinking the pixels where we get buffering from the end but um, you know, it is what it is. The shader is doing exactly what we told it to do. So you can kind of dial it in up until the room doesn't look like it's bent anymore. And um, yeah, that's basically all there is to it. Fantastic. Now, that's it. That's all I needed to show you. 
This is the shader. As a matter of fact, the first time I did the shader, I ended up using if statements in order to flip the effect of the shading of the, the, the distortion uh, from going up to going down when it goes past the middle of the screen. Technically, you're not supposed to use logic within shaders. Uh, technically, it's not a good thing. So this, this particular approach uses no logic, no if statements. It's all just you know basic multiplication, division, basic math. That's it. I ain't touching this engine ever again. Oh.